I get too close, I, I can't get it in the camera. <laughs> Said, so you said well, this is dates about from about 1810. Mike Chase, I'm carrying. 1810, okay, yeah, that's the date we used. That's the shape it was in, of course, before and after. Oh, wow. So it had to be disassembled? Yep, you can see. You can see the process of disassembling it up there. You know, the crane lifting up beams and things. Bents, as they're called. Yeah. You can see the shape of some of the bents there, the bottom, you know. Yeah. And you can see, I think that's Mr. Wellett up there, the guy who did most of the work, and one of his kids washing things off, you know, and just. Huh. Behind the cross yeah. cut, that's our beloved Mr. Cummings. And we have, you know, in, in first weekend weekend in August, we have our annual wheat harvest festival. Oh yeah, which is, you know, the picture of the reaper coming out of the barn there, the binder, I should say. Oh, up but there. Okay. Nice. We actually own two other old things, and we own a thrashing machine, and <laughs> wow, all kinds of weird stuff. Huh. And there you can see it being put back together. Down here. Yeah. Yeah, down here. Oops. Right. Almost an old fashioned Amish barn raising. Right. <laughs> Done the nice. same way, pike poles you use, you know, to to push it up into position. Right. So when did this happen? Oh when did we do this in the nineties. Yeah. Cause I, I came in here once before. In the barn? Yeah, years ago. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. This ramp wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be here in a real barn. Right. This would be the hayloft in a barn. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, you understand the English threshing floor, the English threshing barn. Mm -hmm. You know what that's about. Oh, threshing the hay, threshing the wheat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, the barns were built on purpose for that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the center bay is for. Okay, the double doors. Okay, both ends. Okay. Gently build into the prevailing wind. Okay. Ah, uh, so okay. So you get a breeze through there. Oh. Okay. You know how it was thrashed with the flails, like hanging on the wall there. You know, the grain was cut uh, in those days, not even in bundles, just cut while our hand wrapped bundles, okay? There was no binding. It was cut with a, with a uh, cradle size. Uh -huh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there? yeah. It's got the big, well, there's one hang right there. See the big hooks on it there? Where are we looking the here? The get the, uh, get beyond this. Right here. This little instrument. Oh yeah, that's a cradle size. You know, it's a size, but it's it's specific for the purpose of harvesting grain. Uh huh. I can't hold on to it. Where's it? Food, so I, oh yeah, there's the blade down the bottom. Me. Okay. Then then you were out in the field, and and what you did, you just gathered up, you know, the sheaves in effect. Okay, made a sheave out of it. Uh huh. Then you dropped it, and you pulled it back. It took a took a rhythm, you know, as you cut. Yeah. You know, Went through it, kept working forward. Uh -huh. So many, you know, steps or half a step each time. Mm -hmm. Swing the cradle, says, bring it back, dropping the wheat. Then the women generally came along, and they bundled the wheat, make sheaves out of it. They take two or three of the heaps here that you cut, mm -hmm. and then then they take a handful and bind it around there to hold it together because mm -hmm. okay. you didn't have twine. So that's what you see in those old pictures, and yeah. Right, right. So that's. Ah. that's I it. yeah, I think we had one of those over at the. Um, the old mill in Upper Treman. Uh-huh. Yeah, they were fairly common. Everybody had one. Cradle side. Huh? My step great grandfather grandfather actually 
Mr. Cut was one yet, up home, and they, you know, in the, in the, in the 20s, they had a binder, but, uh, uh, you know, the horses would trample down the outside course, you see, was, you know, the horses were offset from the binder, okay? So the horses would trample it down, so he'd go around the whole field, or the fields, you know, wow. the cradle size, and... Wow. Well, they were, you know, frugal in those days, yeah. and waste grain and things, yeah. you know, so... Yeah. So yeah. that after you had it harvested, uh, you let it dry out in the field and all that, mm -hmm. then uh, you'd probably put it up here. This is a, the loft, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's generally where the wheat went, or wheat, or oats, or whatever you had, or barley. Right. Barley. Right, uh, wasn't much grown here, but you had barley, of course, a lot uh -huh. of that, okay? Uh -huh. That would be stored up there. Uh -huh. And then come, you know, convenient time when you had nothing else to do on the farm, uh, then you do the thrashing. That's what the flail is about. Well, first of all, the construction of the... Well, I'll explain the process, I guess. You understand the flail? I've seen those before. Okay. Basically, you just threw the bundles down on the floor, you laid them out in a pattern or whatever, and then you went through there and beat it to the flail. Yeah, yeah. Hang it up very good. You come around, I won't try to demonstrate the technique, <laughs> but you come around wham and wham and wham and beat on the heads of the grain till you saw it, you had it pretty well thrashed wow. out. Okay. So the grain would be lying on the floor. The, the, the bundles, not the, the bundles, bundles, but spread out now. They would up again, you know, the sheaves, okay? Yes. It would be spread out again. Okay. And it would be beat on as much as you could, you uh -huh. know, and all this and that. And when you got done with that process, of course, theoretically, the grain would fill down down to the bottom, right? Right. You know, then you took your straw forks. We probably have one here somewhere. It's generally a big wooden tined, uh, wooden fork, big tines on it, okay? Uh -huh. Then you fluffed it up shake all the grain out of it, okay? Then you put the straw back upstairs, use it for bedding or fodder. They used right. to for fodder back in those days. Uh -huh. And uh, then you'd have the grain and the chaff left on the floor. And then you had, this is kind of a winnowing basket, okay? Uh -huh. Now you had to clean the grain, okay? That's, uh -huh. This is where the English thrashing barn comes in. First of all, the floor was generally either a double floor or a jointed floor. Uh -huh. Okay, like uh, this has got a tongue and groove in it, okay? Right. Uh, they made those early on because you didn't want the grain to fall down too. You wanted to save the grain. That was what you were after. Right. So you had a tight floor, either, like I say, a double floor with the boards offset. You mm -hmm. know, if you didn't have the means right. of, of grooving it, okay? Right. So you offset the boards and all that. And you see even the square pegs that was put in was when we reconstructed it was, you know, years ago. And uh, uh, then came the winnowing, like I say. Uh, of course, in those days, the, the baskets were woven baskets or something, handmade baskets, you know, uh -huh. not metal, but this, uh -huh. is, this is the same thing. Uh -huh. Then you'd scoop the stuff up, and then you'd throw it up. And this is, you know, the, the other the side of the right. door would be open, and you'd have the breeze coming through, and that would winnow out the... The wind you know, would blow the chaff out the, the chaff. door. Yeah. Huh. And, and then would, the grain would, was heavy enough, it would right. fall down. Right. So. And then finally, okay. you had pretty well clean grain. Yeah. And that's what the English trashing barn, that's what the purpose was. Ah. It only had side walls in it, okay? Yeah. So so the grain didn't get spilled into the hay mow or over the, here would probably be the cattle, where cattle were kept or horses or something, you know? Right. You'd have a bay for that. Right. Cool. And, uh, well, I guess that's most of the story of the English trashing barn.